exactly. And this is the most detail that I have in this drawing in terms of assembly, where all the standard components are. So this will give you a lot of marks, but it can also lose you a lot of marks. Very important here, the cross hatching of the bush, this gap that we have in between these components, the distances of the components, like is it taller or shorter than that component? The lubrication, I've already mentioned how many mistakes you can make with adding in this grease nipple just in terms of the drawing. All of these small detail in the drawing is very important because every mistake you make on that counts as a technical mistake. Okay, so let's move to the bottom part of this assembly. If I now continue and I say, okay, this arm is coming down, 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 down to the bottom, and I can draw this whole component because I know how this component looks at least, and I know it's now in the correct place. So I can already start by drawing in this component. Okay, so something in the lines of this. Okay. At the bottom, when you remember when we went through the logical connection, I said at the bottom I'll have this pin 19 to 16 coming through the bottom. Now in what orientation am I going to put this in? Remember at the bottom I have the bigger hole, the 19 hole. And here, that will be where the 19 sits. But how do I know I don't put in the, the pin like that and the 16 is pointed out on this side? Or if I put the pin in like this and the 16 is pointed out like this? So this is where I use my schematic again. If I look at my schematic, I see this component that I've just drawn. If I put the pin in like this, the 19 on this side and the 16 on this side, the 16 will have to fit into this component. Is that something that I can verify with the components that I have? Now, if I look at the, the foot piece here, remember that's what we identified the foot piece to be. And if I look at this hole, I see that it's a 16 diameter. So that makes sense. It makes sense that I have the pin coming in from the right, 19 on the right, and through 16 on the left. So what I can do already in my drawing is say, I'm going to fit this pin in there, Again, I'm turning it around, so let's turn it around so we know how to draw that easily. I'm going to draw this pin in exactly as I see it from this side. So now I have my hole here. The pin head will sit here on the outside and it's running through the inside. So as it runs through the inside, how long is this distance? So I look again. Here I have 52.5 and the length that I have on this bottom foot is 52. So it's almost exactly the same. The pin is slightly larger, so the same as before. The pin is slightly larger, so it slightly sticks out there. This line will then disappear. But this is how the pin will look. And now I can already say I can complete the hatching on this. And what I have from here is I have the pin coming out. And now if I draw in the rest, I can see there's the part, the 16 part that I have. So remember, this is the pin that we're drawing. Okay. What happens on this side of the pin? When we look at the schematic, we first have our foot piece, but probably there's also going to be something to fasten this pin, because at this stage, I can push in this direction and it won't move because it's pushing against these sides. But if I push in this direction, it will fall out. So I'll definitely need something to be added on this side. Okay, so I can already fill in my center line here. So it's good to remember to fill in these details. And as I continue to say, how does this foot piece look? I can see that I have 22, the space that's here. And the space that I have with this pin is 38 and 22. So if I have 38 and 22, means that this part will be 16. So 22 will be slightly bigger, so it will take up some of the threading. So this part that I have here, it fits exactly around here, so there is a small gap in between. So I can fit my foot piece around here, slightly taking up into that threading, and it just comes off the bottom like this. Okay, so before we continue, you can at this stage, you can already draw in the detail of this foot piece because we know how the whole foot piece looks. There's nothing special that we need to worry about. We can add in this foot piece. There's this little 
higher part that we're not physically sectioning through, but it's behind that. So we'll look at that in a moment. And then there's also a center line through there. So that is the foot piece. So just a, a comment on how this foot piece looks. Remember if we look at where this schematic is actually cut through. So if we look at where the schematic is cut through, and why are we actually not sectioning this part, is we see that we're sectioning it through the middle here, right? So we're cutting through the middle here, but what we still see behind it is this little lifted part. So see that little part? That is this piece that we have clear here that's there in the background. Okay, so that's why that is there. Okay, so now we have the foot piece in. All we need is our nut on this end and then we have this whole assembly connected. Now in the same way as we did in the previous nut assembly, you want to make sure that the nut is fitting over each other. You won't have a mess like this. Your lines will be a lot cleaner, so something similar to this. Um, but that will be your full assembly completed. Okay, so let's look at the memo for example, so I can point out a couple of details for you. Of course the external assembly is a lot easier to do and with the external assembly you will just be drawing what is happening on the outside and once you have this uh, connections, how everything connects, you can easily draw that in. So a couple of common mistakes to remember here. The first being to make sure that you have the center lines on both views for every circular component. So here we have these two, we have this, we have that, and the same here at the top. So make sure you have the center lines for all the views. In this specific case, they've drawn an auxiliary or a partial view here to indicate the detail of the slot. This was not explicitly asked, but because the slot will be part of the mounting dimensions, that will need to be drawn, but we'll get to that in a moment. Another important thing to remember here to not make a mistake on is the orientation of the nut. Can you see when I look at this here, I see three sides of the nut, which means if I'm looking at it in the opposite view, I have to see the three sides of the nut. The same with the grease nipple, here I see the three sides of the grease nipple, and here I have to see the three sides of the grease nipple. So the orientation of these nuts and bolts are very important. So please pay close attention to that. Okay, so let's for a moment look at the dimensions for this specific drawing. Now remember, in assembly drawing there are only the three types of dimensions that we want. The three types being overall dimensions, which is something that you should always be able to identify. And let's look at them as they've been indicated here. The overall width, so the total width of your grease nipple up to that end of the pin. And this value here is my overall dimension, very important. Now often when we have a grease nipple and you're not sure about the exact height of it, you'll estimate a height based on the diameter and that height you can add to this. So there is usually a uh, if uncertainty factor that we use here. So if it's two or three millimeters out to either side, we still accept that value. But if it's not a grease nipple and if it's exact, an exact value that you can determine, we look for the exact value. Okay, so overall height. So it's the overall height of the full assembly. And there's nothing strange about the overall height, so we need this exact value for the overall dimension. The final one is the overall length that we have here and that will also be something that you can exactly determine. And so these three are three dimensions that you can immediately get correct. Those are three marks that you should never be losing. The second two are often a bit difficult. So the second two are mounting dimensions and functional dimensions. If we think about mounting dimensions, that is how this assembly will be fixed onto a bench or if it's uh, attached to a roof, however it's attached, whatever dimensions I need to know to be able to mount it. Like I need to buy screws or bolts or something to mount this to something else. So I need to know what the sizes of those are. Now these gaps that I have here, these are the gaps that I need to mount something through and into a bench, for example, in this case. It's a platform, it's a belt tensioner. So this platform is attached to a floor or a table and I need to fix them. So here I need to know what these look like. Why do I not just dimension on these that I have? So if you remember from 
your dimension uh, tutorial, we are never allowed to dimension between hidden detail. So because this is a hidden hole, we can't dimension actually on this view, which is why in this case they drew a small little partial view of just this part of the component. So here I can say the distance between these holes are 18, the diameter of the outside hole, so how big the, the top of the, the bolt or the screw can be is 32, and the inside is 17. Okay, so these three dimensions are my mounting dimensions. Okay. The final part that I need is the functional dimension. Now the function of this is a bow tensioner. Important with this bow tensioner is how big is the size of the wheel. So that will be a functional dimension. How large is the diameter of this wheel? And how far are these spaces between these two center lines? Because that's what will determine how this component or assembly is actually used. Okay, so those are the dimensions that we require for this specific drawing. And if you've added a couple of extra when you've actually made this drawing, that is okay. But you only get marks for the ones that you have correct. So if you add extra dimensions and those are ones that we don't need, you don't get any marks for that and that will actually just waste your time. So make sure that you know which ones to add and start with the three overall dimensions immediately and continue from there.